We are getting you set for the start of training camp as the Giants head back on the field. Lance Meadow, Paul Dottino with you. And right now we're going to focus on the inside linebackers, certainly a key position for Patrick Graham's defense. And, Paul, this was a position where there were a lot of movable parts last season, unfortunately, because of injuries. We saw flashes out of rookie Ryan Connolly. Alec Ogletree was the veteran. Now you got some new faces in the mix, and it's David Mayo as well as Blake Martinez that I think are both in the driver's seats in terms of setting the tone for this position group. Well, David Mayo, a holdover from last year's squad. We understand. We know about his Carolina roots with uh, general manager Dave Gettleman, a guy who had over 80 tackles last year. Now, he did miss a few too many. Quite frankly, I think he'd like to clean that up as he is relied upon to play more snaps. But I think he showed that he's a smart, heady player, gives good effort, and he's the kind of guy who maybe may not make any splash plays, but for the most part, he's going to be in the right spot. So I think he's certainly a very intriguing guy moving forward. Now, Blake Martinez is the other aspect of this equation, and he's somebody that wasn't with the Giants. Martinez comes over from Green Bay. He has been Mr. Consistent and also durable. He's played in all 16 games each of the last three seasons, Paul. At least 100 tackles in each three of those campaigns. And here's where familiarity comes into play, Paul. He was with Patrick Graham, who is his positional group coach in the course of the 2018 season. Yes, and I think that that's going to be a big key and one of the reasons, obviously, why he came to the Giants. I want to give you some numbers, Lance, because, as you said, three years in the league with the Packers has combined for 443 tackles. Those 443 tackles leads all inside linebackers in the NFL over that three-year time span. And I know some of his critics in Green Bay said, well, maybe he didn't make enough of plays at the line of scrimmage. Well, of course, he's already explained to us that had a lot to do with the scheme that the Packers played. So without watching them on a consistent play-by-play -play basis, it's hard for me to kind of decipher that. But here's what I can say. Over the three years that Martinez has played, he is fifth among inside linebackers with 25 total tackles for a loss. Now, that's only six behind Luke Keekley and only one behind Bobby Wagner. So a very prepared player, very intelligent player, and obviously the Giants are looking for those types of players to play in Patrick Graham's defense. Ryan Connolly, speaking of youth, is the next player that I want to focus on. And very encouraging results, Paul. Unfortunately, his season was cut short as a rookie after four games because of the torn ACL. So he's coming up to be about a year removed from the injury. Remains to be seen in terms of where he's going to be once he gets on the field. But this is somebody that was an opportunistic player, Paul, last season. And I think has still a lot of upside despite the small sample size from 2019. You have to be excited by the highlights that he put on tape before he was hurt, Lance. Again, we know that guys coming back from torn ACLs usually have to wait to their second year back before they max out following their rehab. So I really don't know exactly how much you're going to get out of Connolly this year. The Giants certainly would like to have him healthy and in the mix and in the rotation. Can he contend for a starting job and wrestle it away from Mayo? Potentially, he could. I think a lot is going to depend on exactly his rehab status. If it turns out that he can only contribute as a part-time player, well, I think the Giants would be willing to wait and then next year see if he can compete as a starter again. He certainly showed that he's got enough skills that you'd want him around. Skills specifically in coverage. He had two interceptions last season, so that also spells a lot about his upside. Now they also have two new faces, Paul, being brought into the mix. A pair of seventh-round picks, Tate Crowder and TJ Brunson. And these are going to be two developmental players that are going to hopefully provide some insurance and some other options for Patrick Graham to toy with throughout the course of this season. Well, you look at Crowder now coming out of Georgia. Let's not forget that last year he was one of the 12 semifinalists in the nation for the Dick Butkus Award, which goes to the nation's outstanding linebacker. Uh, and by the way, the Bulldogs, we're talking about a national championship contender type of program. So that's nothing to sneeze at. Now, he didn't put up as big a numbers as Brunson did at South Carolina. In fact, Brunson, over the course of his career with the Gamecocks, had nine games with double-digit tackles. And I think you know as well as I do, Lance, you can't lie about production. You either made the plays or you didn't. 
and Brunson made a lot of plays when he was in college. And Crowder, who you brought up earlier, interesting path to the NFL, actually started off as a running back, but considering all the running backs Georgia produces, no surprise, he made the right decision to switch over to linebacker. So youth and veteran presence, a nice mix at the inside linebacker position. Paul, looking forward to training camp. Thanks so much for joining me. Let the competitions begin. Absolutely. That is a breakdown of the inside linebacker position as we get you set for the start of 2020 training camp.